can have your own microphone and camera. You, you have a quorum? I believe we have a quorum. We have uh, stuff. Okay, but she just needs to close. Just close. Yeah, she just needs to call it. Talk to her. She did? She's new. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Diana West, and I call the Historical Commission meeting to order. We do have a quorum. I am seeing five historic member, Historical Commission members right now. Can you, do I need can to you, do roll call? Yeah, you just, and you just, we just need to know who's, you have to use, say their names. Oh, certainly. Don't mind. Uh, Brianna Quinn is on the Zoom, and it looks like Denise Barstow, Irene Costello, and Mary Carney are in person. Great. Great. And any votes you need to take will be taken via roll call vote, because <clears throat> it's hybrid. That's fine. Um, unless you guys bring forth a vote, I don't have any votes planned for tonight. Okay. All right. Um, so, is the Susan want to talk to this, or do you want to talk to? I think this was James. This is my sister. My request. Um, I am concerned about the long-term um, use of the common by groups that have outgrown it. And I specifically am talking about the Asparagus Festival. When it was small, it was great. But now it has got, and this year's going on, there's no question about that. Now it has gotten to a place where our police, fire, and DPW spend an awful lot of time in advance of the event for which they are not reimbursed, planning, organizing, and taking time out of town business. It also causes a problem to Hadley in terms of traffic on Route 9. And I don't believe that it actually brings anything to Hadley in terms of awareness of asparagus that we don't already have. And so I think I would like to somehow start talking about when does an event get too big to be on the common? I guess that's my focus because there will be other people who will want to use it. And when it's small, that's one thing, but when it gets to be the, how many did they say they had last year? Does anyone remember? It, it doesn't really phase me, so. Anyway, lots. Do you remember, Mike? And every year it has grown, so there's no reason to believe that won't continue. Okay, that is my comment. And Sue has something she wants to say. Hi, Sue. She, oh, she's on mute. You should come and check. Yeah. Uh, my only, uh, I was just uh, reviewing the uh, use of the Commons application. Uh, and the language for the insurance is uh, something that I had not seen before. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there is nothing. Um, in general liability that refers to a million dollars per individual, $3 million per group. The correct language there is a million occurrence, uh, 3 million aggregate, and obviously uh, the town of Hadley should be named as an additional insured, not a co-insured. So I just wanted to clean that up a little bit. Okay, and, and that's on the... Historical Commission's application, is that correct? It's, it's on the application that was listed on board docs. I, I just happened to run through that. And, um, th and the fourth page is specifically where the insurance requirements are. Okay, so so that's, that's a town application. application. Correct. All right, and you want to change it from Hadley should not be a co-insured. Well, so and, the writing is it either through the uh, the changes that she wanted. Okay. okay, so those make sense. So, do we should we make a motion to 
change the application so we can get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. All right, I will make that motion to change the application to what Sue Glowatsky says is appropriate. Second. All right, motion by Randy, seconded by Joyce. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Excellent. So maybe I'm an outlier here, but um, I'd like to do more to promote the use of the town common. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, I understand what Jane's saying about the asparagus fest. I mean, it certainly has gotten to be significant in size, um, but I, I you know, and I don't think we've done a survey or anything, but I know many people who do uh, plan their day around that, and they come, and they they shop in Hadley, they go out to restaurants in Hadley. I mean, they 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 spend the day. Um, I certainly um, am very much in favor of continuing to work with public safety and, and DPW. I know one year we had issues with the uh, trash that really wasn't cleaned up um, properly afterwards, and it did overburden our DPW. Um, but I think I think the way the application process works, that people need to address that. I, you know, kind of like the same conversation we had with the young men's club not that long ago. I don't, you know, I I don't know that we want to um, kind of arbitrarily limit and say no more than X number of people. I would say no more than X number of cars. I mean, I, I had no I, sense of what that number might be. Um, and I, and I, I guess if the if the issue is we're concerned about town services not being covered, um, that can be addressed as part of the application process. I think so. And, and it has been used for like the five k run and and different things like that. It's not particularly just for the asparagus festival. And I've heard from farmers. Yes, we're known as the Hadley asparagus capital of the of the world. But I mean, we uh, also I think our farmers and and people in town like to come and promote their their goods. And it just not always asparagus, but have other things that they bring with them. So I don't think it can be just limited to asparagus. There's other things that go on at the asparagus festival. Um, and I think you're kind of taking that away from. Um, I haven't heard anything negative from farmers saying don't have an asparagus festival. We don't have it to go there. You know, I mean, they're more than happy to um, bring their uh, asparagus to that festival if they have it. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. This is Diana. And so this has this application hasn't been updated from, I'm guessing, 2005. Mm -hmm. So we're coming up to almost 20 years. So I'm looking at the fee structure and what I'm hearing is that we are holding big events on the common, but our town employees are not being properly compensated for those events. And I'm seeing that a nonprofit fee is only $100. And I understand the Asparagus Festival is run by NEPM, which is a nonprofit. So I think perhaps, um, I don't know if that will happen tonight at this meeting, but we should address this fee structure because I don't think it's uh, appropriate for our current economy. And it sounds like we need to be compensating our DPW, our police department and the fire department uh, for what they experience for large events such as the Asparagus Festival. And I think we also need to think about perhaps some different categories of what the events would be, because I think the Asparagus Festival is a bit of an outlier versus what else is happening on the common. And the Historical Commission discussed at our April 2nd meeting that we support continued limited use as long as whoever uses the common leaves it as they found it. And mm -hmm. I understand after the last Asparagus Festival, there was quite a bit of damage to the grass and to people's front lawns from parking. So I just, that's what I'm hearing now is that we should rethink our fee structure so that people are properly compensated for the work that they are putting into this. The other thing that I, I have heard is um, from the West Street residents about their street being closed for traffic to them. I mean, they can get through, but it's really hard. And that they don't have any sense of privacy. And it's 
I'm not comparing it at all to the young men's club, but people do wander into people's yards and look at their flowers and comment on things because we're a nice, friendly town. But some people object to that. Mm -hmm. Jennifer? Um, so there was the application in 2005, but there was a change made on the application to include the deposit, the $500 that was put in in 2018. We have to do a five hundred dollar deposit, and they did use um, that money um, to purchase the grass seed to repair the commons. But the town did have to pay the workers, the town employees, to seed the grass. So it might be that you also want to have the deposit maybe be lifted up a little bit mm -hmm. appropriately, because um, as I understand, the blend that's used on the commons is, is quite extensive, mm -hmm. um, and so when we were looking at that. We were sort of taken back at how I was taken back, but BPW was stuck. Mm -hmm. But I was taken back over the, the cost of a bag of the grass to raise the bit of grass. Mm -hmm. So that might be another thing that you want to consider as you're going through the process of changing things. Mm -hmm. The only thing I worry about that, because it says all applicants must make a $500 fee. And I think of I don't know, the Church of Hadley doing their sunrise service. Um, and I don't, you know, if we increase it, you know, I know it's refundable, but certain organizations might not have that type of uh you, uh well i mean just cash up front things like that i, I think that's up to the board to take each, each yeah. thing you know each event by event and not put a thing on it. if we wanted to waive a fee for something we certainly yeah. can't do that i mean that's not written in stone yeah so i don't have a problem with people using the common uh it is called the common for a reason and it was it's been that way since this town was created but i agree with jane that if we get as big an event as the asparagus festival certainly damage is going to get done to the common uh and whatever or whatever other expenses are incurred by the town that we should not have to pay for and i don't know the appropriate way to be able to cover that five hundred dollar deposit i don't think is even close a thousand mm -hmm. i doubt would be close mm -hmm. i think we need to get some kind of feel for over time if the dpw can tell us you know this year we spent this much money and this year we spent this much money and police and fire put in all this extra time blah 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 and hopefully at that point we could figure out a way to say all right the event is this size typically this is what kind of cost the town incurs and we need a deposit that would cover that and again it, it we're not necessarily going to keep it but if we need to spend it the people who are benefiting from the use of the common should pay it, not the townspeople. So what about the issue of in advance planning sessions? And they're very good about wanting to work with us and plan. I'm not saying that's not true, but that takes our fire chief and our police chief out of their regular routine mm -hmm. for some length of time. Yeah. And they talk about logistics takes DPW planning about fences and trash barrels and all of those things. So perhaps this year we should ask the departments to keep track of how many hours they spend in advance in working for this event. I then don't, we'll have a sense of what's going on. I don't disagree with that, Jane. And can, I, can I make a recommendation from past practice that I've been involved with in the town property? Yeah. Um, it's, Deposits are kind of a pain because you have to deposit it and you got to hold it or you just hold the check, but it's kind of like an extra admin. You you can, uh, part of the charge of the use of the commons is if you know you need DPW, you, DPW keeps track of what they're, because it's going to be overtime. It's not typically during the workday that they're, they're You just, you can do a, a flat rate of what the overtime expense is going to be in a small percent for just the admin costs. BPW keeps track of it, police can keep track of it, um, fire can keep track of it. And that's they get an actual bill of what extra service was provided. But this is in addition to them actually paying for police at on the day of the event to work on Route 9. This is the pre-planning stuff I'm talking about more. And and then the afterwards for DPW if there's repairs to the common. Well, that would be a part of it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
But I can, I, what I can do is give you some suggestions of what other communities do with their town common and, and, and with their um, any other kind of space that you ever want to charge for. Because there is, you are right, there's absolutely a cost and a time, and sometimes the bench strength is short on weekends. Exactly. So I think they need to reimburse for it. Mm -hmm. but. Do I add anything, Mike? <laughs> it's a always standard good. back there. <laughs> All right, so we'll leave it as it is. Any any other comments from? So we'll work on it. We'll see what happens this year, and then work from there. Sounds mm -hmm. reasonable. I, I think in a future meeting, I can bring up what what I found because okay, we have summer and fall coming. It'd be great to have it ahead of time. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. All right. So you guys want to, Diana, if you want to close your meeting. Uh, so just so I understand the action item for what we need to do on our end. So we're going to see how the Asparagus Festival goes this year and then make a determination of how we want to upgrade, update the application and perhaps change uh, the rules around the use of the comment. Well, could I just add something? I think sure. it's... The insurance and the application, it sounds like, should be done anyway because it's a very old document. Exactly. And the Asparagus Festival is its own issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll yes. add a review of this uh, application to uh, our next meeting. Uh, we are meeting next week, but the agenda for that is already submitted. So we will consider this for the May or June meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments from the other historical commission members on the call? Oh, if you want, yeah, come on up to the the front, please. Mm -hmm. I told you earlier. <laughs> the people who bought the common, that property between the sidewalk and the road, is town property. <laughs> And a lot of people had to fix their lawns the previous time that it got really beat up with the asparagus festival. So that is their concern. I mean, they're concerned about that. Um, they did it at their own expense. And uh, it was because of the asparagus festival. And it is technically town property. Um, I think that's an issue. But they're not allowed to park down there anymore. They're not allowed to park on West Street while the festival is going on. On the side, by the by, on people's property or anything else, the police are you know making sure that they're staying off of their property. So um, I'm not sure what the issue is now because that's not supposed to be. There's no traffic going that way. There's no parking there on other people's property. Yeah. I think there was a problem in the past. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, in the past, but not okay. not of the last two times, I believe. Right, I think they changed it. Yeah. So just to comment on it, as an ex West Street resident, I understand that the town owns from the sidewalk to the street, but the residents are required to maintain that property not necessarily they're not there's required to they're, no, they're not even required even, to but nobody else would right no i understand <laughs> so that's that's a sticky situation yeah it is town sure. property <laughs> and if the residents don't want to they don't have to take care of it but i agree jane nobody's going to do that because they don't want the front of their yard to look crappy ratty <laughs> ratty okay we'll call it ratty. so i think to sherry's point if some of a part of the, the property between the road and the sidewalk gets destroyed, then the person whose house is adjacent to that should call DPW and say, hey, town property in front of my house got destroyed or disturbed or whatever by uh, an incident at this particular event, please come fix it. Because they shouldn't have to, the resident shouldn't be responsible for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is also going to tie into the question that now that the weather is good and parking is no longer allowed on North Lane, people are going to aim for the common for parking because they know that people park on the common on occasion. Mm -hmm. So I think that that needs to be addressed in this overall view. <clears throat> yeah, we did have a question about what the rules were about temporary parking on the common, if that was allowed or say large family gatherings, or like if you have a landscaper for a couple of hours, is there anything regulating that? Uh, and we've noticed that the Dawson Conservation Area parking often gets filled up pretty quickly. 
So uh, will there be regulations around that parking or is that a future discussion? There's something in the uh, in the uh, application. application about parking that may, some people may, the residents may find that they're using the town common periodically. Mm -hmm. They just are not supposed to use it on a permanent basis. Okay. So there can be some parking there at, at different times, but not regularly. Thank you. And the thing that I don't know if you were aware of it, but um, the DPW director came to us because the trees along North Lane, because cars were parking from the Dawson overflow on the edge of the road, it was compacting the tree roots. And so he requested that not be done. So that area is mm -hmm. now no. And the question is, because that was in the middle of the winter, what's going to happen when everybody wants to be walking on the dike? Yes. Is that part of this agenda tonight? No. It's talking about yeah. the use of the common. Yes, it is. It's part of the okay. agenda. Is it possible to expand the parking lot? No. Mm -hmm. we've, we've asked that question, and because of the proximity to the river and conservation issues, that was a, a, a no. But somebody could mm -hmm. ask again and see what they say. I mean, I don't know what's what's the lesser of the two evils, expand the parking lot or to park on the common. So it, I, I think a, a conversation with the Conservation Commission may not be a bad idea. <laughs> We actually wanted to cut back on the use of the dike uh, for walking and whatnot because we have an issue with the stability of the dike itself. So um, we're also in the process of looking at that also to see if we really should be because it's not um, going well with the stability of the dike itself. So um, it's part of the engineering, engineering process that we're doing right now. So. Which would be a shame yeah. because so many people do enjoy it. But yeah, yeah. yeah. we've already had to repair it over the years several times. Um, so it's an ongoing process with no help from. Um, we did get help the last time, mm -hmm. but before that, it was. It's not. You know, the Army Corps of Engineers built the dike, but there's no one there to help you now with it. So it's not their problem. They say. Mm -hmm. So that's it's a Hadley problem. Mm -hmm. So would it fall under our jurisdiction to set up a meeting with the Conservation Commission, or is that something the select board would handle? Yeah, can do that. I think you guys. Oh, I can just make, I can touch base with, with Kayla first and see what she thinks. And if you need to officially go before the conservation, we can figure that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank yes. you. All right. Anything else about the use of the commons? Uh, hearing none, I call for a motion to adjourn from the Historical Commission. And I guess we have to take a roll call vote for that. So, oh, I need a second. Sorry. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Uh, roll call vote. I'll call on Brianna first on the Zoom with me. Yes. Uh, Irene Costello? Yes. Sherry Parsons? Yes. Denise Barstow? I didn't hear the yes, but I'm going to say, I think it was a yes. Mary Carney? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, Dino West, also vote yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank nice you for coming. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. 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 3.1 consent agenda, Lawrence AP 2439V, minutes from March 6, 2024 and March 20th, 2024. One day liquor license, Fragile X uh, Charity Wine Tasting, Excellent Cafe, September 29th, 2024, and Common Vicular License for Car Cider House. Approve. Mm -hmm. uh, second for discussion, I noticed. Um, Cars and uh, Fragile X representatives are here tonight. Now, if they want to tell us a little bit about what they're doing. Okay. So, are you seconding? Yes, uh, yeah, oh. it's second. Okay. Yep. Um, motion by Jane, seconded by Molly. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Yeah, there was a good discussion. discussion first. Oh, do we vote on these first and then? No. No. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I always thought we pulled out, voted on the good ones, and then voted on the last one. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Donald. How's everyone sitting? Hi, everybody. How are you? Here, kind of, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Denise Devine, um, I am running a um, fundraiser for Fragile X Syndrome, which is a condition that my son has. And um, we are doing a wine tasting at Echelon Cafe on September 29th. I know you mentioned the date just getting going and getting our paperwork in and um so we can uh, have a great event again um i think it's been at least uh 11 12 times that we've done this so it's, it's a great event um great support for the community we appreciate that um and i just wanted to uh, mention that um and also i just a, a quick sidebar. I did send to Molly. It's over 8,000 people that come to this Fairfax Festival. It was on the website for them. Thank you. Just <laughs> FYI. Because um, I live on West Street. So I, I was kind of curious about the number too. Um, so um, yeah, so with the events um, happening in September and uh, we put uh, advertising out on Facebook and all that. So, and, and Sean uh, at Four Seasons will have tickets there too. So if you want to purchase tickets, that's how we get tickets. And we appreciate your support. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's great. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just going to change hats for two seconds. Um, Happy Mother's Club is going to have the candidate site again next month. Um, and um, that's be May 13th. We're going to have information uh, put on Happy Media. Um, and also, we are bringing back our fair, our holiday fair in November. So, at the at the high school. So, just to kind of throw that out there, so people look for it, and um, we appreciate all the support from all the citizens and the nice. people that come. Great, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, Jonathan Car Cars here. Um, we're just for the Common Victuallers license. We're just hoping to add some snacks to our offerings on the weekends seasonally. Uh, looking at cheese plates, featuring maybe some local cheeses like Thomas Farm, Grace Hill, Chase Hill, and uh, yeah, people have been asking for snacks, so uh, we dip our toes in the water. I just wanted to find out what you were going to be serving. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> not whole meals yet. Not yet, not yet. We're just starting small. Trevor so, rewards. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay, sorry. So we have a motion on the table, and we have a second, and we had some discussion. Um, is there anything else? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, public comments. The public comment period is a time for the public to bring their concerns before the select board. The board will hear public comments for 15 minutes. Please limit your comments to three minutes so that other members of the public may have an opportunity to speak. Is there anyone here for public comments? I wanted to do the... Um... One second, we have Denise. Hi, Denise Barstow Mans. Um, I am a volunteer coordinator for the Hadley Memorial Day Parade, which is happening on Sunday, May 26th. Uh, and everyone is invited. And the day begins with uh, cemetery ceremonies at each of every single one of Hadley's many cemeteries. Um, and if you are on the select board or an official um, or a veteran, you're welcome to join us at 10.30 a.m., which is 20 minutes earlier than it has been in the past. Um, and we'll visit the cemeteries. The parade um, begins at 2, lineup uh, starts at 1. Um, the parking lot uh, of the senior center and library will, will be closed between noon and 2 o'clock to accommodate lineup. And overflow will be onto Middle Street. There is a registration link um, in all of the information and also on our website, which is hadleyparade.com. And there are complimentary snacks, refreshments, hot dogs at the Legion after the event, and we hope that you join us there. See you there. Awesome. <laughs>
Thanks, Denise. Is there anyone else here for public comments? I want to do just a quick one now. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just because I can, I can do it. So, uh, Halley Banner Committee, uh, we have reached our goal of seventy-five flags. Oh, nice. So we will be getting them up. Uh, this between American flag, banner flag. But what we are offering is on Sunday, May nineteenth. Um, from 12 to 2 will be a, a Hadley Banner preview picnic. Ooh. So um, from 12 to 1, um, it's a private uh, viewing for uh, sponsors and family, and a slight lunch will be served also at that time. Um, the Medal of Liberty presentation um, and Gold Star will be um, from 1 to 2, that presentation, and then that will be the, the program itself will be 12 to 2 at the Young Men's Club um, on East Street in Hadley. So um, those that have sponsored a flag or whatever, um, please come out and see them. They're all going to be there. Um, so it's going to be, you know, a really nice. They look good. So, you yeah, know, happy to get that done and underway before this uh, coming Memorial Day. Nice. That's awesome. All okay. right. Are there any other public comments? All right. <laughs> Moving on to 5.1. So we are to review the Finance Committee's FY25 budget. Um, Linda is online. Carolyn is here. Do you want to just go over some of the changes? So I, I can just, uh, just a reminder where we started and where we are. We are pretty much in the same place. Uh, we did, if you remember, uh, I did send a request out to the department heads that they submitted their budget, uh, to let me know what they needed. Uh, this is the first year that we weren't able to um, fund the requested increases. So it was typically some minor staff uh, increases or some extra money. You know, we don't like to cut training, but we have to look at certain areas that might have had some wiggle room. Um, and we're going to look at the budgets. We were we were, uh, reassured the department heads that if things were starting to happen mid-year, we would certainly take a look and just see where we could use reserve fund transfer. So the, the, the everybody was great. And so that is the philosophy behind it. Um, and if you have questions about the how it's going to be paid for, uh, we did go over a cup, you know, about a month ago with the finance committee. But if you have any questions for Linda, and Linda can add anything else on the financial side of things too as well. Right. This is basically the same budget that was presented. The Finance Committee uh, had their hearings and uh, spoke with different department heads. And we uh, this is basically what was in the budget book back in the middle of February. So we don't have any changes since then to present. Okay. All right. That's easy. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just going to ask one question just because it comes up sometimes. Um, so for... For all of the departments, um, if, if for the departments that didn't necessarily get what they were looking for, has that's been communicated back to them? Yes. We're not going to get any department heads coming in after the fact saying, "I would hope not this yeah. way." Yeah, okay. we, we we did. Okay, yeah, just making sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. So now, um, do we? Want to go 5.2, then 5.3, or 5.3 first? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. So we're just going to review the warrant. You could, so Mike can leave. Uh, I think he yeah. might be here for both. Are you, are you here for both, Mike? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Look in the mirror. All right, let me just, we'll start to go through it. Yeah. Um, this is, this, uh, we've all gotten a little confused, but I hope I'm going to articulate it. If you look at Article 1 of the warrant, that simply is, do you all have it? Yeah. Okay, that simply is an announcement of the elections coming up. Part of that election include the uh, positions that um, will be on the ballot. 
In addition, you'll see another, it'll say Article 1 ladder truck. That is simply for the ballot. So it's just an announcement. Randy understands this. There won't, there's, there's not a vote. It's simply an announcement. But you, we had to, by law, put the article in that section of the warrant. So no one's going to be voting on that separate Article 1. Does that make sense? Well, unless it's voted for a town meeting, and that's why it's so, so that's no, why. announced. Yeah, this is just an announcement. Right, it's announced. It's going to be, there's going to be a article um, that, that has to go at the annual town meeting. You'll see further down. Right. Um, but And then you'll also be um, authorizing that article to be on the ballot. So when we move elections to after town meeting, we did it for this very purpose. We wouldn't have to wait six weeks, but we could have it announced here so that the proper announcing time had happened. If for some unfortunate reason it doesn't pass at town meeting, then this is ignored. But if it does pass, it's ready to go. It's ready to go. Okay. Got it. That was easy. You bet. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then the, we do have the consent agendas. Uh, the one difference this year is our moderator has asked to take out so, uh, one, uh, which was the membranes that we're funding, because it's going to be a big expense in a few years. Every 10 years, they will need to be replaced. Um, so he, would, I think there was enough questions in the past that we want to talk more about that article, because it's a large amount. So that will not be in the consent agenda. So I just wanted to what article is make that? that clear. Are we going to do our votes for this tonight? Because I see Finance Committee has already voted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'm just getting, I just wanted to set the stage for that. And okay, just so speak. Article 7 is that what you Yes, yeah, Randy's, yes, to answer your question, Randy, Article 7 is the one that she pulled out of. Yeah. 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 For treatment plant filtration, that right. Okay, so, so that was used to be originally in the mm -hmm. consent agenda and it got asked to be removed by yes. the moderator. Okay, yep. understood. Thank you. So how would you like to do the consent agenda? Do you want to do it all at once? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can quickly tell you what each consent item is, if you would like me to. Or, or is there any in there in particular that you need if you have a question about? I think we can read them. I, I think just um, even just reading the titling on it, because sure. it's not posted on the website anywhere yet. So for okay. people who are watching, maybe they. Okay. So Article 2 is grants. That's just giving permission to accept them. Three is Chapter 90 consent. That's money that we automatically get. Again, it's authorization to receive that money and spend it. Four is uh, short-term borrowing. That gives permission for Linda to borrow for short-term loans. Five is contracts in excess of three years. We have to do that by Mass General Law. And, okay, that's it, right? Six. Revolving, Revolving accounts. So let me do, I will, let me talk about uh, the, uh, the revolving accounts. There is a change uh, for the Council on Aging. If you look at that chart, you will see that the Council on Aging just says Council on Aging. It no longer says the Council, Council on Aging ban. That was a, a, a revolving account that was really not being used. They utilized the, the fares differently. And so we had a, another account called gift accounts that was getting used more like a revolving account. And so really to, to clean it up, it's really just cleaning it up. The programs and services that they bring revenue in, and then they pay for the instructors, they pay for the cost of the program. That should be coming out of revolving account. But we needed to change the name to accounts on aging uh, revolving account, and that will bring in it's definitely used for uh, services being provided that are getting revenue to pay for it. Um, and it's re it, that is simply a spending limit. It's not the expense of what they're going to receive from the town. It's a spending limit. They can't spend over 5,000. Town meeting has to set that spending guideline. So that, that does not appear to be on the consent agenda on this, this warrant I'm looking at. Is that correct? Uh, it's, it's a revolving funds. It's revolving funds usually are. Um, it says M6 on M6, the, yeah. It is on the consent agenda. It's, I think what, what I think you're noticing is we don't have you don't know the other words. consent. Right. Yeah. So would that be added to it? Yeah, I'll fix that. Okay. And I usually I do usually give an explanation of the consent agendas really quickly before town meeting. I'm I'm sorry, before they start to vote. Yeah. 
And Carolyn, somebody asked me a question on Article 5 today, and I oh, that's right. couldn't answer it. Um, so, and you just explained that any contracts in excess of three years, this is like a, an MGL issue that we have mm -hmm. to, do we typically do contracts longer than that? Like, there's still allowed, I'm so sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. It's still allowed, you can, for contracts, you could do three years and then choose to do up to two one-year extensions. And this means that you don't have to bring it back to the town meeting to do it. You can both sort of, you know, want. Okay. And, and that's either the town administrator or the select board can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that cover employment? No. Mm -hmm. Right. This is strictly. This is strictly example. Um, our IT services. Did we extend them for a year? Yes. Yeah. So I think it would be good when you explain, Carolyn, that you make people aware of that. What what Jennifer just said. And the fact that it's not an employment contract, but for services and whatever, so that the voters understand point. what's going on. Okay. And also include the example. Okay. It's cleaner. It's no, yeah, that's helpful. an idea of what we're talking about. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. There's, two, there's, there's more. What? There's more. Oh, there? I thought it was it. No. It's just a six. Six. Well, oh, six. How come I see 12 and... 13. Oh, those are CPA. But it's Articles, on, it's, right? because it's on the consent agenda. Yep. But we've said Articles 12 and 13 are the CPA, I'm sure. Yes. Article 12 is CPA. Article 13 is CPA. And those are administrative ones. You're jumping ahead. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve Articles 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So move second. All right. Do we have to do a roll call vote for yeah. these? And um, all those in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Aye. All right. So select board recommends 500. Next. Next. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so seven was what I just explained, the water treatment plant filtration membrane reserve. Okay. So we'll second. We do this every year, right? Yes, yes we do. Okay. What should be said when we're talking about this? I will. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Article 8 is prior year invoices. These are ones that either they, the invoices come in after the fiscal year is closed, which by law you can't do. It has to go to town meeting. Uh, I would like to know what the Goose Town Communications and Hadley Auto Express charges are for, please. Mike, can you help with Goose Town? Yes. Okay, thank you. And Hadley Auto Express. There are several. Yeah, we haven't quite figured it out. That's that's research to make sure they're actually So you're talking vehicle inspections? Okay. All right. Thank you. Motion to approve Article 8. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 9 is the budget, general fund budget. We just looked at that. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Motion. Do you want me to say the motions for you again? No, yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 10, oops, did you get that? Yeah, Article 10 is the Enterprise Fund Budgets. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Article 11 is at the media. Media, 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 sorry, my eyes got blurry. Hadley <laughs> Media Legal Costs. This was when we did the charter review and these were being um, charged to the uh, general fund, and it really is, should be directed to uh, the enterprise fund. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Article 12 is community preservation. That is consent, as well as Article 13. Those were CPA extensions if uh, projects aren't completed. Oh, this is something they put in place after two years. 
uh, they need they would need to give them uh, an extension if they weren't done. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I had a question. Is there a way to do 12 and 13 together, like collectively, or no? You could probably do them in the very beginning, but I would, I think um, that, that's a Kirk question. Well, okay. it it's part of the consent agenda, mm -hmm. and I think we should add it. didn't vote on it because it's CPA at the beginning of this, or it should, it, should we have voted it as part of the consent agenda originally? That's how it was normally, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it would. It normally would be part of the consent agenda, and so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should we? Should we? If we haven't done so already, m move to add that to the consent agenda, so that Amy, your your point is that it would be all done together. Yeah. So, so it's move, not changing numbers, but move it up on the list so that we see six, then 12, 13. Mm -hmm. sure, yes, I that's typically what would happen. It, you would, I, I, if, when I was moderator, I would read the consent agenda is articles two, three, four, five, 12, and 13. Okay. And we would vote on that. So it's it's standard procedure, not a, not nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. Isn't that the moderator's prerogative, though, Randy? Well, I mean, it's technically the select board works with the moderator to set the warrant. And if, you know, I suppose you could have numbered these the Article 12 and 13, 6 and 7, so that everything was in order. Uh, but I mean, the moderator certainly has a prerogative to do. Well, sure with this no, I, I I don't think so either. I, I I see no reason to be concerned about it. So in the future, I assume it's too late now. I think if this happens, we should try to number these sequentially so the mm -hmm. consent is all in one space. So the reason we do this is so when Mary Thayer or someone stands up, she's she's taking care of it all. She's going through all of the CPA articles. Um, it's very common in other communities that you have your consent throughout the you just list them that's the purpose of listing all the numbers yeah, i mean it, like i said it's happened in the past uh, every time i did a town meeting then there was a consent agenda there was stuff that was out of order okay yeah number wise so we should add it to the front do we need a vote for that though or no what did we just do to be safe that our motion article 12 and 13 to the consent agenda so much second all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then do we also need to vote on them as well? Yes. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. All right. 14. Uh, so the, these are, again, these are CPA. Um, they've all been vetted and approved by CPA. One is for the Phelps Farmhouse and... Let me just keep this going. Mm -hmm. well, we do? We need to do one at a time because we got to vote on. Yeah. So move. We'll... Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <laughs> Article 15 is the town hall exterior. What about four? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I did the same thing. I did the same thing. <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Article 16 is acquisition of property. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Carolyn, there, I would imagine that this article will get a lot of questions yes. at town meeting. So. so we'll have our PowerPoint again. And every person, every department or board that has an article has to have, have provide information as well as be available to speak to it. Mm -hmm. So, and what we, uh, yeah, that, and so we'll have that, we'll have that rough draft for the PowerPoint uh, next week. And and you said every department has to have somebody to speak to it. Which department is going to speak to this? Select board. Select board. <laughs> so, so remember, we do, we, have to, we do have to figure out the vision of motives. Right, right. So, I do, I do provide cheat sheets. 
All right. So we can move on. Did you vote on that? Yeah. Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, the ladder uh, Carol, Carolyn. Yeah. I'm sorry. On this one, it might be important to tell them that there is an allocation. It, it, this is borrowing some to be paid from um, from water and from sewer. Is what the. Uh, Oh, I see it. It's, it is written there in the motion. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the article. But yes, so 70, 70%, 15%, 15% is the allocation that we're going to be using. So I just thought it might be good to say it out loud at this meeting. Yeah. Thank for the you. purchase of the property. All right. So the fire truck. So moved. Second. Again. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good job, Mike. So, Mike, how are we going to make it different than the fall town meeting? Oh. Yeah. Oh. I just hope people have seen a little four years out with the well done. Oh. Okay, so article and eight. with all of the hotels that are going up now, we need the ladder. Oh, or we're going to say burn, baby, burn. I don't know. What, you know, what are you going to do? People don't understand what's going on here. Yeah. Right. And I think this is a different article from the standpoint that we're, we're no longer wrapping in the other truck as well. Mm -hmm. So this is just a clean shot at the ladder truck. That's right. Yeah. And to have the amounts, I believe, at town meeting of what it will cost. If we can work with Linda on that. Um, yeah. Okay. 18. So Article 18, I'm going to give a little segue, and then I'm going to pass it over to Linda. <laughs> this um, is the water tanks. And this, uh, we just got the changes and the input back from legal, um, Linda Spelt has spent a lot of time on this article. Um, and I literally put the changes in before I walked over here. So I haven't had a chance to meet with Linda to go over this, but Linda, I'm going to, you know, right. get your press and, and if you can help explain it, because it, it was a difficult, uh, just to get this worded so, the correct way. So there's no change in the way this is what being funded then what we explained when uh, the night that we were before select board and using the uh, the interest rate of 4%, the, uh, the borrowing period of 30, the grant hopefully of 30%. Uh, so we have to vote for the full $9 million of borrowing. And the allocation is just as we said then. What we've been struggling with, how do you get the wording to implement what we decided? So this is a, this is a little, little back end too, trying to get the them to match up. And um, I think one thing we've learned is we get legal counsel and bond counsel together sooner on our borrowing articles. That that's that's where we kind of went went astray a bit because we we're working with legal counsel and uh, and, and they really do need the bond counsel uh, who has much more of experience, not only with Hadley, but how this is done. So uh, the, so this is the wording. I haven't really gone through it. I know it was very late in the day when he came through it and we will um, double check with them any more, any, uh, tomorrow morning if they have any questions about it. But this is the wording that we need in order to have the borrowing for the water tanks that the select board will allocate between water and debt exclusion as per um, our discussion that we had a few weeks ago. Does that and sound okay? Right? And we figured out what? what the tax rate increase will be accordingly? No, we're not at that, we're just, no, we're, we're not that far. Uh, we will for town meeting, but no, we don't have the tax rate increase yet. We have uh, have had a trouble with vacation schedules getting together. So we'll work on that next week, Jane. Thank you. Is there a motion? I move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? 
All right, Article 19 is the, the Tadley Drinking Water Asset Management Plan project, which I've explained in the past. I don't know if you have any other questions about it. Okay, so we just, everybody needs to be aware that there's a huge uh, reimbursement from the, the state, is that correct? Yes, and we did get the, we did get, um, a, we did re receive approval from the state. All right, motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Article 20 is the ambulance, ambulance service. As you know, when we started it, uh, we had a budget specific, so specifically for the new, um, the new van, new bus. And um, this is to help, if, you know, Mike, if you want to do any of this explanation, let me know, but I'll start. Uh, and Linda will help as well. So this is, um, it's cut what we're calling a, the bridge funding. Is that correct, Linda, for this? To, to bring to um, town meeting to see where we're at. We know we are getting revenue, uh, but we want to, I think this is a very responsible amount to bring to the town to continue it. And we knew it was going to be a couple of years that this was going to happen. So hopefully each year it will go down a little bit. So at the fireman's luncheon that I went to last week, several of the departments were talking about their ambulances being in enterprise funds. And is that something we should consider in the long run? And if no, so, so, so most of transition to the uh, what we have is a special revenue fund established. So those and that's anyone who's starting this now is typically going in that direction. Mm -hmm. It's easier to manage. You still have to authorize spending in ten years from now. That's how we'll be funding and supporting the ambulance budget with those revenues that we've taken in throughout the year. It'll also eventually help. He will have a budget. Our chief's going to have a budget for capital expenses moving forward. Well, but doesn't isn't that the same thing that happens with the enterprise funds for water and sewer right now? Well, the, the difference with the enterprise funds, you're doing chargebacks, and it's, yeah. it's, it's actually a, a little bit more complicated. This is very simple. It's very specific. Okay. So um, if, if, as we talk to our accountants, I know Linda can add to this, yeah. they, they feel this is the best way to go. Go ahead, Linda. There's a, there's a special uh, statute for ambulance receipts. Receipts reserve accounts and and how to operate the uh, the ambulance funds. What we're planning to do, you you know that we've been running this out, out of the article, keeping it separate from the budget, and uh, and as Carolyn described it, a, a bridge way of handling it until we get it into the budget. The plan is as of the uh, the one hundred eighty five thousand is completely out of free cash. We haven't used any of the uh, ambulance receipts yet. This is going to get us to the fall town meeting. As of the fall town meeting. We're going to then, for the rest of 25, I think, uh, we're switching accountants, so we're going to make sure we can run this through the, uh, the, the new accountants to approve of this way, because our the, the ones we're leaving wanted us to uh, make this change as of the fall town meeting. But um, the this ambulance budget is now going to come into the regular one. It's going to be budget with, it's going to be another departmental budget with the general fund budget going forward. And the, the receipts that they have that have accumulated are then going to be voted up to the amount that's being spent, voted as additional revenue into our general fund account in support of the ambulance. So unlike uh, unlike the enterprise fund, if if our if the ambulance receipts come up short, then the town is responsible for carrying the balance of the budget. So this is not starting out like a rent enterprise fund because it is going to take a few years to get off the ground. This is not going to be a, uh, they must stay within their receipts. Otherwise we're not going to get off the ground. So it's going to be part of the part of the general fund budget. And then the receipts that have been accumulated in that fund are going to be used and as additional revenue to the town specifically for this. For this. And another uh, difference than just having it run through the account and have the town take in the receipts is at some point when they get to the higher level of uh, ambulance services and um, there is anticipated that the receipts coming in actually is, are going to exceed the expenditures, but they will be kept with the ambulance fund. 
So um, there'll be more of an explanation of this in the fall, again, after we get on our, uh, after we get uh, comfortable with the new accountants and can thrush, uh, you know, flush this out exactly how it is. But uh, we are not going to continue doing it out of articles the way we uh, did for, for the kickoff year last year and our continuation at this point. So fingers crossed. How are our receipts doing in, in regards to how we felt we should be? We got our first 13,000 in. Uh, the the services were up and running, I believe. Uh, I'm sure someone will correct me. I think of this as of October 1. Uh, there is then a lag in generating the invoices because the bills go out and the payments come in. So in March was the first time that we had uh, research, receipts turned over. And... Um, so if it's, uh, I, I think what we were talking about is 10 to 15,000 a month is expected. Uh, we right now have 13. I expect we might have 80 to 90 as of the fall town meeting and then um, hopefully increasing thereafter. Mike, you're shaking your head. No, I'm just, I, I, again, we're, this is the first year we're doing it and we are anticipating 100 to 150 calls. And we estimated as part of this whole plan, $750 a call. We've increased that to a thousand based upon ALS intercepts and you know a PLS call versus an ALS intercepts is, is a big difference. So we're just being very conservative, conservative right now until we can get the first under our under our belt. Um, but yes, the revenues are starting to come in, and we have contracted with Pro EMS, who is our billing company now. They are handling all that. Um, so we will start seeing more consistent because they're they're fighting for their percentage. They get four percent off of the total cost. Um, but like Linda said, our first submittal based upon October first through uh, basically December thirty first, and we don't have all the calls in yet. Yeah, I think it was it was under a dozen calls that were actually paid out. So we have you know. Where we have catching up to do with insurance, the insurance companies back in. So, but it was nice to see, you know, a couple of $4,000 checks come in and then the $250 calls. And so, but it, it's good to see that that revenue started. But the volume itself, just the call volume? The volume has actually been exactly what we were anticipating, actually a little bit more. Uh, we've had multiple days in the past month where, you know, normally we might see one call a week, second call. We had, we had two days within a two week period where we had multiple calls uh, for that ambulance going out the door. And it's, again, it's just continuous. The, the amount of EMS calls is just, it's crazy right now. So it sounds like you're meeting or exceeding your expectations at this point in time. The money has just caught up with. As of right now, yes. And also just remember, we have not started, we have not even begun to discuss or. It's okay. Thank you. We haven't been on any mutual aid calls. So again, once that ambulance is fully operational, or if we go into the ALS range, then uh, again, everybody around us is as desperate as we are. So okay. again, good. All right, sounds great. And this is the one that's currently housed in North Amherst, North Adley. No, it's in our center station. It's who, in our center station during the day. Who's up north? So at night, after 8 p.m., our action ambulance moves up north because our full-time firefighters, 24/7, are at our center station, okay. so they can respond mm -hmm. in our apparatus. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Did we make a motion to vote for this? <laughs> motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. All right. Article 21 is the municipal uh, vulnerability pro preparedness program. That's for East Street. There's a stream reach that drains from Route 9 to East Street. Uh, it is for our it's a 25% match, 250000 for needed for a million dollar grant. And I believe in when we talk to Scott about this, it's not just going to be for from Route 9 to East Street. It's also going to continue down to Bay Road, the work that's going to be done for this million dollars. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? I, I, I don't remember him, what, he, what he said when you guys had that discussion. Okay, that, so, that's what I thought I remembered. It I, 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 can be something. Yeah, if that's the case, I think people need to yeah. understand that, that it's just, it's more than the little stretch that from Route 9 to East Street. Or 
or however long the stretch is. Okay, All yeah, right. a map of what it's being covered would be good for show and tell. Yeah. All right, motion to approve Article 21. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then so, Carolyn, Carolyn, can I can I just recap the last few articles here and explain uh, different than we, what we may have discussed at earlier meetings? Um, these are the Article Twenty One. This two hundred fifty thousand dollars, as well as the um, three hundred twenty five thousand that you're voting for the purchase. This is all going to be borrowing. We at one point had discussed having one of these items come out of stabilization, and Finance Committee was very much against that. We, they do realize, and, and just so you understand too, that this might really uh, put a dent in what's available for use for capital borrowing in the fall. Um, uh, on the, the assumption being that whatever comes up for fall, these are very important articles to take care of right now, and these would these are priorities. Um, if we do run into a situation where uh, we don't have enough borrowing, there's other things that we need in the fall, we have a couple of other options. One is we can always use uh, stabilization at that point, but we might not need to, but we could use that uh, since we already did a lot of borrowing that could have been stabilization. And the, the second um, option would then be to increase, uh, depending on the free cash that we have available, increase the budget by another fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. Um, that would allow us to do more payments for borrowing within the levy and expand that within the levy borrowing a little bit more so that we would have some more room for borrowing um, on capital items. So I just wanted to let you know because it is um, it, it is different than um, the way we, ha we had been planning it. And I think that you also have a financing worksheet. And I, I see that probably was an old old one in there and it still has money coming out of stabilization. I'm gonna have to send you an updated one because Finance Committee just met Thursday night and um, we just didn't get the uh, the right paperwork across, but there's nothing coming out of stabilization except that 50,000 uh, for the budget for the OPEP. So. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Article 22 was an assessor's article. And this is in regards to uh, MGL Chapter 59, Section 5. And it's just raising the income limits. Uh, it's too low. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the asset limit. It's too, it's too low, so no one applied. No one is eligible for it. For what? What does this explain? This please. What this clause means? I don't think Dan. Dan's on. Yeah. Um, right now, <clears throat> excuse me. The town offers clause forty-one, which is a five hundred dollars senior tax exemption. The problem with clause forty-one is the maximum asset limit is twenty thousand dollars for a married couple, and it includes the value of the home. So we are not granting any clause 41 tax exemptions. What clause 41 C does is it raises the married asset limit to 55,000 and it excludes the value of the home that does not produce income. So anybody in a single family house, their value would not count. Or I, I believe if it has to be over a three family before it's portion of the home gets added in. So anybody living in a one or a two family that's 70, that has a married couple less than 55,000 and they meet the asset or the income limits would be able to get a five hundred dollar tax exemption. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. How many people do you think that would affect? Ballpark. Uh, it's really no. difficult to tell. A few years ago, we adopted Clause Seventeen D, which was a hundred seventy five dollar exemption. And right, <laughs> we were figuring anywhere between ten and twenty, and we've averaged one a year. I would think that we'd probably have 10, maybe 20 people at most. And that would that would cost 10,000 out of the overlay each year. And there's wow. more than enough in there to, to handle that. Those income limits, the property taxes alone are gonna be? Yeah. So um, I'll make a motion to approve. If anybody qualifies for this, I'll happily yeah, second. get the 500. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
And just begins. And the rest of them are planning board. Yep. And the next one is a planning board all article. The rest, all the rest are. Oh, I think it's only one. It's only one. Yeah. It's one huge one. Oh, yeah. It's, it needs to get cleaned up yeah. with, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's not a draft. And anymore. this is going to generate a lot of conversation, I'm sure. That's why it's last. Multiple towns are having this on their town meeting. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's, yep. it's, it's mandated by the state that we allow battery storage, but the planning board's trying to figure out a way to keep it so that it doesn't impact too many people. Mm -hmm. Bill, Bill is available if you want more of an explanation tonight. Otherwise, you know, whatever you want. <clears throat> Otherwise, he can go back to bed. <laughs> Otherwise, he's yeah, back to the kitchen. <laughs> yes, which is where he is actually. If he's there, it might be good if he could give a short synopsis, please. Okay. If he can do that at town meeting, he could. But I like and then hear. you're going to have this again. So, in two weeks, aren't they posted um, on the town website now that we have it back? Yeah. Okay, because I had a couple of people asking. They could. Yeah, we just got to. We just got to. There's some of the stuff I got to today, so I've got to clean it up, and we also we have to get it into the regular form without the motions. So okay, we'll, we'll do that. Thank you, Mr. Dwyer. Could Hello. we just have a synopsis, please? So the. Um... We had an opinion from prior town council that battery only storage systems did not fall under our definition of solar. However, the uh, state really is pushing battery storage options wherever they can find it. So we have no regulation of it at present. Uh, it is not a just say no opportunity. So um, we have drafted the bylaw that is before you to um, regulate where battery only storage facilities can go. We may have other rules for battery storage facilities associated with a solar field but um, the proposal that came to us that triggered this was for a battery-only storage facility. So we are trying to create reasonable regulations so that we can all live with it. And the, the essence of it is not in the aquifer or the aquifer protection overlay district. Um, We'll see how it goes. Thank you, Bill. So when you post it, will it be on the face page of the? Oh, absolutely, right. Yeah. Good. We don't vote on. We don't. Correct. That's fine. That's a big Okay. The, uh, the, play, the planning board did vote uh, five zero to support this. Four town meeting. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. Hey, cool. We did it. All right. That piece, I don't All right. All right. 5.3 fire truck ballot question. Which is now a formality. I yep. think Jessica wanted it voted on tonight so that it could be put. It has to be. Yes. You, yeah. you guys have to vote on an article to be on that whole election. Okay, my motion to support having the fire truck ballot question on the ballot. On the ballot mm -hmm. the okay. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, 6.1 is the uh, police department is requesting that the select board amends the fines for parking violations. Um, and this is a change that's so we're more aligned with Mass General Law. Mm -hmm. So Mike actually texted me and he said it's a, the parking ticket item on the agenda tonight is to make sure the select board adopts what the town has already voted in the past town meeting. 
uh, wanted to increase the fines, but we can't because it will take a town meeting vote. Uh, town council suggested we make sure the select board approves the language. Um, giving someone a $2 fine isn't going to stop them from parking anywhere. So more reasonable would be a $20 um, fee. So that would be another thing that we, we would need to take to town meeting to increase that fee. All right, so we need to at least ex approve what we already have in place. There's a yeah, tech motion. So I'll make a motion to amend the select board rules and regulations, chapter 420, traffic rules and orders, article seven, responsibility, penalties and repealers, section 420-32, violations and penalties to change the fine from not more than $2 for the first offense and not more than $20 for each subsequent offense of a like nature committed during any period of one year. Two, for the same offense committed in the same zone or district, a fine of not more than $25 if paid within 20 day, 21 days, $35 if paid thereafter, but before the parking clerk reports to the registrar, as provided in Mass General Laws, Chapter 90, Section 20A, and $50 if paid thereafter, except that parking within a posted bus stop shall be punished by a $100 fine. Second. Okay. All right, any further discussion? Is it too late to get this on the warrant? We closed oh, it already. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, and it's, um, I, I did not get the impression it had to be on the, this warrant. No. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyhow, let's vote. Let's yeah, vote. vote this and... Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 6.2 is the, um, we're going to discuss and begin forming a strong town administrator committee. Um, and there is the uh, attachment. Um, so it looks like they're looking for two select board members. Um, and then some members of the community that have some um, <laughs> municipal government knowledge that would be, um, you know, that would add value. They look like they're recommending, um, <clears throat> from, from what I was reading, it looked like they're recommending that we try to stay away from too yeah. many, like, people with a vested, potential vested interest in the outcome yeah, that try to do uh, community outreach to get people who participate in town government and like know enough about how it works but are too engaged in it. Um, and and the recommendation that was made is that or, or the example they gave was in some towns they've actually gone out on like the Nixel system or whatever mm -hmm. to get as widespread an audience as possible. So mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if tonight we could talk about, I mean we always use Hadley Media obviously. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to do anything of that nature? Or? But email blast to committees. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think that's part of what we should just figure out is how do we get the word out on this? Mm -hmm. Are you looking for us to get it or for the select board? I'm just talking to select board. But yeah, that's why. Yeah. That's why. But, but it's certainly, yeah, I mean, all opinions are welcome. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, post it like we normally post it. So, like on TV, yeah, I see TV five, yeah. on heavy media, yeah, yeah, article in the newspaper, yeah, you can do an article. I think an article would be great. Yeah. Um, you've got the you've got the website, multiple Facebook pages, and people do read those in all the different departments. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having visuals in places like the senior center and the library and to definitely have some doubts. Mm -hmm. So I, we can definitely, um, I don't know what your feelings are about a Nixel. Usually it's for emergencies. Yeah. So it, that, that gets, a, you know, no. you just want to overload the public because then they stop listening. And then mm -hmm. there's a real emergency. Yeah, that's why yeah. email blast to be pretty effective mm -hmm. for reaching people for non-emergency things. Uh, I think the Nixle is best to be saying for those big things. Um, you could also, you know, in the past we've done a flyer at town meeting with all the boards and trade openings, mm -hmm. um, which are something I was planning on doing again. Um, we could 
could um, just just have a QR code that would link to that if we're interested um, to go and look at it and apply to it that way as well. So mm -hmm. that's another option. Um, Can I request that in addition to QR codes, you have something for seniors who don't use QR codes? The handouts would definitely be helpful. I do that it's tell me more as a QR code too, because some people like it on their phone and not mm -hmm. um, paper. So I, I do both, Jane. I try to thank do you. everybody. Thank you. And, and, and we were working with um, the Collins Center, and I was waiting for some more information back on what the charge of the committee. I think we need the charge to go with mm -hmm. that. So exactly. if you don't mind us waiting for that charge that you guys can look at yeah, and vote or approve of. Yeah. And I think you also want to put a lot that I think people should submit their background on their resume. This mm -hmm. is really important for you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that they can be interviewing. Mm -hmm. There's no money involved. You can't pay them. <laughs> oh, shucks. That's, That's all, good. All the glory gets no money. <laughs> all right. 6.3. Um, I don't think Dr. Christensen's here. But um, there is a, a Dr. Christensen from uh, Amherst College Biology Department is requesting permission to conduct a wildlife research project uh, with her students, and it's going to be on town property, um, setting up some cameras. Um, Kayla has no issues um, with it. Um, so. Sounds good. Yeah, it it, yeah. Sh it shouldn't cause any harm to anything. The the trail cameras just get attached to trees by straps. They don't hurt the tree. They're not going to hurt the wildlife. So I have no issues with it. Sounds like a project. Yeah. Yeah. Though so I, I one thing I after reading it, I thought well just as long as they make sure we make sure they come back to us with their results. I'm I was curious. Say, yeah. Yeah. Nice to see. Fine. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I moved to approve. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, any other items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? And there are none. Uh, town administrator report. Okay. Um, there's really no updates with hiring right now, so I'm going to skip down to the collective bargaining. I will be having a first general meeting with uh, the Hadley Professional Firefighters. Um, it's really just going to be a basic meet and possibly do ground rules, but I'm going to keep you guys updated as we go. So um, just wanted to show you there was movement there. Uh, the classification classification compensation. I just I did send out the department said had some updates and that was one of them I included. Just trying trying to let them know that you guys are actively working on this and that there would be a rollout with it as well as the ability, um, you know, if they have any that, that we, there will be an appeal process. If they have any concerns. And what is our anticipated timeline? It's all up to it's uh, my anticipated is is hopefully by the end of June we can have that in place. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and then let's see. Go uh, strip down a So I want to just um, I want to thank Alex for quickly taking on. Um, I got an email about a uh, digital equality uh, plan for actually all of Massachusetts, and they invited uh, Hadley to be a part of it. And we, we just don't have that type. You know, we don't have an IT our own IT department. So I just sent it off to Alex, and Alex worked really quickly and sent in a letter of interest and application and we were notified today. I think you all got the email mm -hmm. um, from that. So that would be really interesting. It's looking for those areas that are underserved. So I wanna remind you about the Rural and Western Mass Conference. That's April 27. Um, I have sent you the registration, but if you need me to resend it, let me know. And uh, a tour for the DPW building committee for the OPM. There's a tour scheduled for April 26th to do a walkthrough through the garage and the building okay. and as well as the area and the service area. And then interviews are scheduled for May 14th and I'm confident that they will have a recommendation for you for the 15th. If you are able to look, the, the girls softball field is completed and they have had a game. So that's great. Did a great job, came out great. Could they win? Oh, I don't know. Sorry, details. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's all about sports. That's hilarious, right? 
All right, municipal solar, as you know, um, I will be, once the town meeting's over, I will be reaching out to a consultant to do that pre-application for solar. And uh, that, yeah, we'll skip by the Russell School. That, that's in process. And town hall columns should be resuming soon. The weather's nice. Um, oh, I did that twice. Okay. And then just a reminder that there is an open meeting law for uh, all staff who's interested, boards, committees, select board members, any volunteer. We really want to encourage everyone to attend that. And that is going to be, it was Kate was going to do it, but um, I'm sorry, Lisa was going to do it. She's unable to do it. So Kate Federoff, attorney Federoff, is going to do it as well. And she's very knowledgeable about that. And that is it okay so i will not be able to be for that open to be there for the open meeting law it says i'll be able to watch it at my convenience. yes where will it be located do you um, know that yet the, the where will the recording it, be uh alex will have alex it. is gonna it's gonna yeah. be on hadley media on youtube i guess so <laughs> you're attending alice so we'll, you're attending <laughs> well now you do it's the notice i gave you so, all right. Okay, thank you. And I did want to let you know we are, I am working on the transition from um, Markham to Aponte and Aponte, and we've had a good initial meeting with the transition team. And we will be also, that was part of my update with the department heads, that we will be doing a presentation because there will, will be some things that some forms will look a little different. We're going to make, make them a little bit more consistent, as well as the scheduling of the warrant and other matters. So. We've got that all set. Uh, can I ask a question about the schedule? Um, so you have key dates on here, Carolyn, on your report about the town meeting, then the annual town election is the 21st, mm -hmm. right? And then state primary, the third state election, November 5th. Uh, my question is the select board schedule. So in May, uh -huh. if we're doing the first and the third, we, you know, we should do the first and the third Wednesdays. So May 22nd, you know, uh, with the way that the calendar falls, we wouldn't be scheduled to meet again if we stick to the two meetings a month in May until the first Wednesday in June. Um, reorganization. Usually the reorganization happens relatively quickly. I don't know if it needs to be the second night, uh, you know, because then there'd be another Wednesday the week after in May. So I'm just wondering, do we want to stick with the first and third? Do we want to add another meeting? You do have you have a third one in, yeah, you could in May. I would add it because we need to have it first it automatically steps off. And then there are only four members, I hope. Yeah. So that would be the next day after the election, which is what I think they'll typically have done in the past. The election, they get sworn in and they come straight to the meeting. Yeah, so I just wanted to... You know, I didn't know if anybody else had noticed that, so I'm just letting everybody know in case, because we wouldn't have it on our calendars right now. So do we want to do the Twitter? Joyce, Joyce has no opinion on it. <laughs> from me. What? Yeah, I know. Yeah, so I would think either the 22nd or the 29th. Um, the 22nd, I think I'm not going to be around, but I'm not positive. So can we make that decision on May 1st? Then I'll know, or I can maybe. We have time. Yeah, actually, uh, we have time. Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything scheduled. I just, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's like I, everybody else is okay waiting. The 22nd or the 29th, I think I'm gone. So mm -hmm. I'll have to, yeah. I don't know I'll have to figure that out. out. So. Wait, you will let me know. Yes, ma'am. Where are you going? Another one. Find your company. Where is it? It's in the Netherlands. Okay. Netherlands. Yeah. Okay, next. All right, great. Um, any items for future discussion? This is an hour and a half. Good job. All right. Um, any liaison reports? All right. Announcements. Um, so, uh, Amy Jennings, 
um, our Park and Rec Director, um, wanted to take a moment to recognize and appreciate all the hard work and dedication that's gone into making the five the, the hot dog 5K event happen. Um, so the following people and departments donated uh, countless hours of their time to make that event possible. Uh, first, the Hadley Police Department, and then the, the MC for the event, our Staff Sergeant Mike Romano. Uh, the Hadley Fire Department, Hadley DPW, and Director Scott McCarthy for providing the road closure protection. Hadley Elementary School, Hopkins Academy, Hadley Mother's Club for snacks and water station. Hadley Media, the Park and Rec Commissioners, um, and Sukulowski for cooking the actual amazing hot dogs. <laughs> so they're very excited. It was a great success, and they can't wait to see the second annual 5K happen next year. Okay. Any other announcements? Can I get a motion? Motion to adjust. <laughs> Imagine that, huh? Uh, I'll second it. Why okay. not? Second. Um, roll call those. No. All those in favor. Uh, yes. 